Feeling so tall, I could give a high five to the pilot. Yeah, family tight, I keep small sugar like island. Whoa, inbox full of contracts, I sign with a stylist. Yeah, blue faces blowing up like violet. Talk about the things they're gonna say when they see me, and when they see me, they just dab me up and say good to meet me. I keep it going, flowing over this and make it look easy. Easy for me to say, I do this every day of the week. And me get a big one, they talk about when all said and done with it. I'm the feature that they want, but then they don't when I come with it. I'm a C, still a C, fill up, blow up the numbers, and I ain't leaving no crumbs. So you know what I'm done with it. I'm a new school vibe with a old soul. Oh, so, oh, so, pay, 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 don't go chasing away from a bro. What's up, everybody? Yo, what's up, my Thor? What's up, Lotte? What's up, Figure Eight? What's up, Kaimito? What's up, the poisonous muffin? What's up, Vespasian? Harry, Meager, Explicit, 6F, Carrier, Ezra Vale, EJ Hardy, Monkey Trombone, Austin. What up, everybody? What's going on? No, no AOE today. No. You know what, though? Here's the deal. If you ask AOE today, Praise, for the next 743 streams, I'll do it. <laughs> but if you miss even one stream, and I will check, then we won't play. Face of the ozone. Oh no, I got the bag. I'm back to just double it. I'm about to pop the top. I've been bubbling. They Obviously. Spot, but I do not cut them in. They trying to plot my drop. They been huddling. <laughs> Feeling so tall. I could give a high five I, I, I to the pilot. pilot. Yeah. Family tight. I keep small circle oh, like island. Like Whoa. Inbox full of contracts. I sign with a stylist. stylist. Yeah. Blue faces blowing up Yo, like violet. Yo, I know a lot of people praying for my downfall. What's going on? December 22nd, 2024 is going to be awesome. <laughs> there's no way it would be worth it. You know what I'm saying? There's no way that even if you did it, that I finally like, all right, I'll play AOE. It's not worth it. There's no way it's going to be. It's not a vape. It's a stylus. Slash vape combo. Oh, that's good. Did you watch the match? Which match? Match. I haven't watched shit. All right. Uh, I went to lunch with Jarvis Johnson. Uh, <laughs> oh, the World Cup. Oh, no. What's happening? What, update me. I like, listen, you guys update me. You guys are my conduit to the world of soccer. World Cup results. What is the fucking vibe in the World Cup? Oh, England, France. Oh, no. UK, get owned. Bro, what a bad year for the UK. They lose the queen. They lose. They don't bring it home. Dude. Harry Kane missed a penalty. And Harry Potter <laughs> hasn't had anything good in fucking 10 years. What, what, what is going on in the UK? That was the last thing they had. Mm, Harry Kane let his country down. Ha, ha, ha. Well, that's just kind of mean. <laughs> that feels a little mean. Can I see the kick? Harry Kane missed penalty. Oh, it's the first result. Oh, yikes. Let's see. Detours. Uh... You know what would have helped? Is if he shouted, Oi, brav! Right before, just to let him know where he's from and what he stands for. And I think because he didn't do that, Harry Kane. You're gonna get banned so hard? Not for a click, bro. Famous last words. Harry Kane is a rat. I'm happy he lost. Why, why is he a rat? Bro, that dude, they didn't even need a goalie for that one. Bro, that's not, the goalie could have not been there. That literally, can imagine, dude, imagine the flex. Imagine the flex on going open net and the guy misses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone said, heads up, row 10. Yeah, if you're sitting here, watch out. There's a fucking meteor headed for your head. Let me say it one more time. Ames, this is sort of your. If you guys don't know soccer, again, let me catch you up as a, as you know, my American audience. You have to actually get the ball in this gigantic net. That's the goal. And so what you want to do is aim the ball. <laughs> Yikes. 
yikes, 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 yikes. Without your hands? Yeah, that's the weirdest part. What does this say? Um, as an EU team lost to 100 Thieves on Valorant last night and chat kept spamming, it's not coming home. Pepe La, England in shambles because the tournament was held in Manchester. <laughs> Bro, I got to say, rough, 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 rough times for England. But, you know, they had, <laughs> I mean, they had a great couple centuries. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like it's got to balance out eventually. They had a run. Where everyone else sort of had to deal with their shit. And now, now they got to deal with this. No queen, no world cup. Mm. Two world wars and one world cup. <laughs> um, us UK frogs are getting ancestral karma for the empire. Yeah, it's sort of what it seems like. It's sort of what it seems like. It's, like it's all coming back around on England. Uh, and also you just have some pretty... Uh, fucked politicians. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you, if I'm being and I, listen, America, we know a thing or two about fucking bad fucking politicians. Uh, the alliance held, yes. You know what? And I think if you guys recall, I was gonna give the H Rock bump, the H Rock cheer. I'm just gonna butt this up. You guys are fucking. I was gonna give the H Rock guarantee to England. But then someone in chat reminded me of France's help to America in 1776 and with the Statue of Liberty and with the Louisiana Purchase. And I flipped it. And that's I guaranteed France the win. Can you turn the AI sublords back on? No. But after that video comes out, I probably will. Um, do you have the link, the ink to prove it? <laughs> Bro, what do... Who the fuck would get a fucking tattoo for the semifinals? <laughs> I, uh, fucking France beat England 2022 semifinals World Cup. Tat <laughs> um, uh, hyped for God's gift to boxing's debut. Bro, me too. Hey, if you guys haven't watched, I would highly, highly recommend Stands his new vlog on his YouTube. It interviews me, interviews Lud, uh, Rochelle. It's shot documentary style. It's a great video. It's a fantastic video. Kant's did a very great one man fucking band job on it. And, um, and maybe we can watch it right now. I think he would like us to do that. Let's just, it's really short, so. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. We're not gonna we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna watch the video, but we're gonna watch something better. Welcome to the Dome of the Thunder. I hit him so hard that I'm making him blunder. I'm beating his ass. You know I'm a drummer. I'm knocking him out. He gonna wake up in summer. I'm beating his head like I'm playing bop it. I'm not gonna quit till the refs say stop it. GG easy. Yeah, fuck it. I'm toxic. I'm goaded in chest and I'm goaded in box. I took out his pawn and I made it look awesome by using the tactic that I learned from Gotham. I'm playing so dial, controlling the files. I'm rising the ranks when I came from the bottom. He can't move his bishop because I got a pin. Introduce him. My glove was chin. I'm punching his head and I'm making his spin. I'm trapping his pieces. Get under his skin. Aim my left hook. Bring all the boys to the yard. I'm the best of the best of the undercars. Got jack. Jabs on jabs, really seeing stars. Shout out the boy Bobby, I'm leaving scars. When I hop on the board, I be in charge. I take him to school with a seating chart. This my house, he's a greeting car. My fist flying out like a speeding car. I'm up in position and gaining some tempo. The ring is my church and the board is my temple. I'm up in material, making it simple. I'm making them tilt while I'm keeping my mental. I'm playing it straight with strong fundamentals. Get back in the ring. I hope you got dental. He's trying his best, but he's hitting so gentle. My face is unfacing, he's starting to tremble. He can't touch me, I'm bobbing and weaving. I hit him with jabs till his consciousness leaving. Walk out with a smile, he's sobbing and grieving. I'm knocking his confidence, boosting my ego. I'm knocking him out. I'm calling it freelo. I sting like a bee and he sting like mosquitoes. He got better <laughs> eyes cleaning out the casinos than keeping his face on my hands. I got the fans chanting stands when I'm walking out. I know that if this gonna be the match that they all talk about. I'm making box box regret his decision. I walk inside that ring as a man on a mission. I got the fans chanting stands when I'm walking out. I know that this gonna be the match that they all talk about. I'm making box box regret his decision. I walk inside that ring as a man on a mission. Yeah, that thing's hard as hell, dude. It's actually so dummy dumb hard. 
that I think stands wins now. <laughs> Listen, I looked at all the facts. I looked at all the logic. I looked at the fact that no chess boxer has ever won by a knockout, and they always win by checkmate. And Box Box is a way better chess player. And I thought, there's no way Stans wins. But then I heard that song, and I realized, fuck it. My boy's about to fucking knock him out. No, I'm not going to tattoo it. I don't have to tattoo every prediction from now on. Okay? That's not how it works. I did one. All right? I swung. Big swing. Everyone what respects a big swing. I don't have to. Every time I'm fucking... Uh, I... I, I <laughs> I bet this movie's going to be good. Oh, you better tattoo a fucking Metacritic of 98% on your fucking leg before it comes out. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I will say, he's not the only one taking Box Box down a peg. All right? Because as of yesterday, I have broken my first goal. Silver one was the goal he set for me. Gold four... Is where I got playing with pay. Therefore, Box Box officially owes me 25 gifted. And therefore owes you. Everyone in this... Fu- he doesn't owe me $20,000 for bringing... <laughs> no, I don't I don't get the 20 grand for beating Silver 1. But I assume tomorrow these will unlock. At which point I will grind up to that. Get 50 gifted for the chat. Then 100 then whatever this is, 250, and then maybe we push for the 500, which would be crazy. 500 gifted is $2,500 <laughs> for playing a game that I like to play anyway. Um, is it total or cumulative? No, it's, to- it's, it's, what do you mean? You said the same thing. <laughs> no, it's new every time. Can you make out my share to my PayPal instead? <laughs> it's not a corporation. You don't have a share. Uh, feel strong with my super fighting for subs for chat. I am. I'm doing it for you. I'm bringing it home, basically. Boxbox Box has been hoarding all the money for too long. And so I'm doing my best to fight for you guys' not official share. <laughs> but sub. Um, I'm already sub, so I should just get cash. <laughs> you guys are not understanding. This is a very, this is a positive thing, but you're not entitled to cash. It's not, it's not something you can swap or trade. I feel like you're you're misreading this. Uh, Quasar Face, they have the 23 months of Prime. You're entitled to cash. Well, no, I just said that. You're not entitled to cash for 23 months. Obviously, that's not how it works. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> giving this cash. Give me the Bezos cash. You want me to give you 170 billion dollars? Don't you're obviously you're gonna say yes, but I mean like that's not <laughs> I'm not capable of that. Um obviously I'm not capable of giving especially all of you. All of you are asking for it. That doesn't I don't have that kind of money. I don't have that kind of <laughs> uh broke. <laughs> My streamer poor. Yeah, you guys are right. No, you're right. Pulling SBF, what does that mean? You realize SBF at the height of his fraudulent stolen wealth was worth $36 billion. So I'd have to pull hundreds of SBFs at once. I'd have to commit the greatest fraud in history, fucking 100x, and then pay it all out to my chat to make them all as rich as Bezos. Um. All right, well, all right, guys. Well, totally unrelated to that, I am starting a new crypto exchange. <laughs> I'm starting an awesome new crypto exchange. I'd love if you guys could invest. It will help me hit my goals of helping you guys out. So if you can just start all, all yeah, buy, buy the dip, buy the peak, buy it all, really. Um, today is Get Smart Saturdays. If you don't know what Get Smart Saturdays is, you're already too fucking dumb. Get the fuck out, okay? We only want people who are already geniuses and we bring them to the next level. Uh, if you kind of know what it is, but need a refresher, that's fine. Get Smart Saturday is an institution on this stream where every Saturday we watch YouTube videos, (laughs) but they have three specific rules. Rule number uno is they can't be too long. Rule number dos, again, we're getting more cultured, is they can't be boring. And rule number three is at the end of them, 
We have to have learned something. We have to have learned something. So it can't be a video that's pure entertainment. We have to be like, oh, we learned something. We got, yeah, we got out of it. Because there's so many, so many entertaining videos on YouTube that also teach you something, which is cool. So, um, don't know three in Spanish? Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> listen, listen, I married a Latina woman. I didn't need to learn all the numbers. I learned uno and dos. That's us two. Mm. Uh, did I say uno, dos, three? That's funny. Um, bro, this sounds like a cringe ass middle school assignment. Well, I'm sorry to make you relive your fucking day. <laughs> you fucking 13 year old idiot, but it's not, it's a little, a little different. And if you're watching YouTube in fucking middle school, then fucking, <laughs> uh, you already have a pretty lucky time. Now I need, uh, I need the, the, the app. I need the app that. Uh, a programmer by the name of, I think Ethan, but I always forget, created one second that allows me to parse all of your links at once and then we will watch them and get smarter. Uh, GSS. There it is. This is the Get Smarter Saturday dashboard. Now, as you paste into the chat, the videos will show up here. Um, gaming for a non-gamer. Interesting. The impossible Halo trick that took seven years. Tower to tower. Yeah, that seems kind of cool. Mini games within games. Interesting. Uh, cuties. <laughs> okay. Hold on this. Hold on this. We are. I'm doing it. I'm building up to a thing, and we're not. It's not now. Uh, but we did get the songs uh, for Cutie Cinderella's Climb to Gold in Taylor Swift style. Um, the mechanics of being Big Bird. Don't care about that, really. St Stilly Cho? The Stilly Cho? The half-barbarian savior of Rome? <laughs> what the fuck is that? When 200 pounds of cocaine washed up in a small town? I have to know. In 2001, a Spanish-bound yacht came crashing into the jagged rocks off the coast of the Azorean island of Sao Miguel. 2000 and yet pounds? it raised no alarm. It asked for no help from the Coast Guard. Despite the very real risk of death, its pilot didn't so much as make a peep. Well, Which makes sense, because in its hold were 2,000 pounds of pure, uncut Venezuelan <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> Why is it called the one that got away? Why do they? Why do they? One has wrap to it in multicolored June bricks. June sixth, two thousand one, like was a pretty rough I'm not day. Not familiar. For the Just to be clear, going into this, there's no Yep Coke here. I don't. I'm not gonna 1.5x speed, you fucking brain rotted zoomer, dude. I'm not gonna. It's a nine minute video. Mafia. We don't need to fucking crank it to two x and put keys in the corner and put three other videos and open up a second tab. No, we can just watch it and listen and learn and enjoy. Of Antonino Quincy had just money. washed ashore in a country he wasn't supposed to be in. He was supposed to be in the Balearic Islands of Spain, thousands of kilometers away, filling the ever hungry noses of the party goers of Ibiza, and in turn, Ibiza. lining the pockets of some of Italy's worst men. But obviously, he didn't quite make it that far. I need a, map a particularly violent Atlantic storm had crushed Antonino's rudder, and limping through those death-inducing waves, he aimed his yacht towards the closest possible land and began disposing of the cocaine that lined virtually every <laughs> available space in his cabin. So I have a question. Uh, maybe I'll answer it. And if he does, I'm so I apologize for pausing. But um, obviously, if you're going to crash and get caught, you don't want to have the cocaine on board. You'll go to jail. I get that. But also, if you take 2,000 pounds of cocaine and dump it overboard, aren't the cartel going to murder you? Mr. Slothraid? Mr. Sloth, they give the two viewers. Like, aren't you, aren't you guaranteed dead? Nah, they're chill. <laughs> I don't think they would understand. I think I would rather go to jail. I think if you dump their... I don't know. I don't, I don't, I guess, I guess either way it's impounded, right? So you should dump it. Uh, $65 million. 200 pounds, 2000 pounds. 
$65 million. That's, you stole $65 million and lost it from the cartel. I feel like you're dead. It's worth of high test Venezuelan drugs. Not exactly something to sniff at. He must have known that the authorities would be coming eventually. After all, he was illegally entering a country with an enormous amount of contraband. Yeah. So, naturally, he started disposing of his cargo as soon as he got close enough to shore to bring it in. He wrapped it in fishing nets and headed over to a nearby cave where he then tied it to the bottom oh, with an anchor. I was, okay. And by that point, given how badly things had already gone for him, you can imagine that, no doubt, he felt that his best bet at survival was to save as much of that cocaine as he could. Okay. Those ocean waves <laughs> might have been a potential killer, but you can only imagine his Sicilian bosses. Were okay, I literally, speed. okay, <laughs> he answered it. Yet, unfortunately for him, his bad luck continued, okay. and as soon as he was back on that yacht, the rope holding his secret little treasure snapped in the ocean well, current. Unbeknownst sucks. to him, dozens of those bricks of cocaine began to unravel from their nets and gently float away. That's kilo upon kilo spit up onto the rocks of a town that for the most part had never truly experienced the full weight of drugs. <laughs> sure, it might have been one of the roughest places on the island, but this was still the Azores. Coke cost over a hundred euro a gram. It wasn't like people were going on benders. Most people here were either too poor or too disconnected to have even tried it at all. Certainly nothing like what they'd experience on that day in June. Nobody knows exactly how much cocaine was. Wait, in I'm sorry. How, wait. <laughs> Uh, okay. So, every kilo, if he is, is a hundred thousand euros. Is that what, is that what I'm understanding? If it's a hundred euro a gram, a kilo is at that. Yeah. So it's a hundred thousand euros per kilo. And it's fucking <laughs> board that ship. Holy and obviously shit. Antonino's not telling, but within hours the police had been brought two hundred and twenty dollars so USD. Kilos. Yeah, exactly. Within two weeks that had risen up to five hundred kilos. And even though they got the lion's share, obviously there were some locals who weren't as sick. Wait, guess why don't we just make money this way? I don't understand. It feels like this substance, what I never heard of this, cocaine, what is it? Oh, San Cool, they have the gifted! I feel like that sounds like you can sell it for a lot of money and it's not that hard to make, right? So I don't get why we don't all go into business together and make a huge profit. It's like an infinite money glitch, really. Civic um. minded and they scoured the rocks looking for whatever was Frog left over. The they found quite a bit. They found presumably 200 kilos of cocaine <laughs> enough for 40 grams for every person in that town enough for a gram and a half for every person on the island probably even more <laughs> to quote a local fisherman they had gold but they didn't know how to work it it was too much to take in over too short a period this wasn't some local mafioso it was the average people of a grungy small town that for the most part had only ever made fishing nets these weren't career criminals, they were just generic dudes. And so naturally, the stories from that period around here are insane. 150 grams being sold for $40. Cars <laughs> packed so full of coke that even their ceilings were stained white. Day laborers setting up IV drips so they could go on week-long vendors. It was zero to 60 in just a few days. Before long, people started coming from every corner of the Azores to buy the now infamous cocaine of Rabo de Pesha. They smuggled it back to the other islands in milk containers and in the bellies of their fishing ships because who was going to stop them? It wasn't like they were crossing any borders. Right. Coke flooded not just San Miguel, but into every remote corner of these tiny little rocks. Even the farthest flung farmer in the hardest to find field had his chance to snort that white powder <laughs> if he so wanted. So immediately, naturally, the hospital started noticing that something had changed. Nobody here came close to having a high enough tolerance to handle what they'd been given. Right. People died. And within the week, oh, newspapers started to document a massive increase in cocaine-related heart attacks and overdoses. <laughs> Up until then, virtually unheard of in these islands. It was like... Well, it was like a literal ton of cocaine had washed up on shore. Yeah. And yeah, if things had turned out a little bit different, that might have been all this ever was. Just a few weeks. I, listen, I, I understand it's sad if a human being dies, especially, a, you know, a fisherman who, but it's just funny to imagine a regular day fisherman suddenly doing a fucking three week bender of, you know, half a kilo of Coke and dying. That's just, that's an insane way to go. 
He's like a regular, you know, nine to five fisherman. And all of a sudden, one day, he just breaks bad, hooks up an IV drip, and just fucking parties his way to death. That's a crazy, crazy way to flame out, you know? Weeks of debauchery in some small forgotten corner of a small forgotten corner. Mm. And as odd as it is to say, if Antonino got away, if he'd never been punished, I suspect that it would have probably died right there. Well, for the most part, anyway. But that's not what happened, because the police got their man. And before that mafia-connected professional smuggler could fix his ship and head back out on his way, he found himself in the prison of Ponte Delgada. And as it turns out, prison is a great place to meet criminals. This okay. guy, he was a big deal. He was in the news. He was Italian mafia. He'd single-handedly exploded the drug scene here. So in that prison, he was a celebrity from the moment he entered those doors. The man <laughs> with the golden connection. For many of those locked up alongside him, they knew that this was their best chance to ever make real money. So like a casino coming across a whale, some of those bad old boys of those dark Azorian halls flocked to their new Sicilian Wait, cellmate. Okay. And okay. when he escaped a few days later, they he chanted escaped? his name from the yard. He didn't even have to hide what he was doing. He climbed the fence in full view of everybody, hopped on a little scooter, and then just drove off into the hills. Of course nobody stopped him. This isn't an American Supermax. This <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> <That's> not... <laughs> Listen, I know we have a bad prison culture in America. I know that. We incarcerate more than like every other top 10 country combined but uh, a prison should do something uh, they shouldn't be allowed to just leave oh what's up oh hello 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 we're guilt tripping you so you don't bail yeah done got it <laughs> what? What mr president happened? all right Pat, we're going out is that ari done? yeah ari and i are going out and brandon didn't go out yesterday brandon yeah, so we are. Uh, I have to go to Radstad's party. Oh, he has to, to go, go. Has tonight. To go. Oh no! What okay. Yeah, so after, bad. but if he bails, the I earlier I go, the less stream we get, right? You know what I'm saying, guys? So realistically, <laughs> you'd rat. Oh, there's, there's Chef's three. He's been so good today. He's not a guilt trip him if he doesn't. If he's not ending stream and coming to us. Oh, I am not leaving now. I'll no, tell you guys no, that right no. now. I'm leaving no, in like hours. Later, you have mm. to hold him accountable. Okay. And here's Yule Dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These are all my animals. <laughs> These are all my animals and everyone in my house all here at once in the middle of the video. Here's Bean Dog. Yep, there's, there's <laughs> my <laughs> sister Sabine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. I have been so just with guilt trip. Chat, you have to hold him accountable. All right. If he but I'm in the middle of video. Are you the yes. kind of paused? I paused it. That's because I'm in the middle. Of <laughs> you paused it. Yeah. So, all right. Okay. All right. All right. Bye, chat. Wow, double stream, everyone. <laughs> Bye, chat. Okay. We will see you later. Like, before we come yep, back. Yep, I will okay. see you. All right, all right. Have I'll fun. see you later. <laughs> Maisie says hi. Damn, she goes to you, Maisie. Straight up. Uh, all right. Okay. I forgot where I was at. I was I forgot fully guilt tripped. But here's the thing, chat, is if you guys guilt trip me to stay, because <laughs> here's a fucking low key secret. You know, I, I, I kind of just want to stream all night. <laughs> I kind of just want to fucking. I'm, we're gonna party after chess boxing. I'm not a fucking party every night, brother. I'm trying to fucking. Stream it up. I'm trying to watch community. I'm trying to fucking vibe. So you guys got to guilt trip me in about two hours. And then I'll be like, well, can't go. We'll see. I'll see what the vibe is. Um, all right. Let's go. I want to see what happens. This is the Azores. But you, my point was, I, I was in the middle of a point. My point is that a prison doesn't need to be the fucking for-profit dystopian nightmare that we have in most prisons in America, all right? But it does need to hold the criminal. <laughs> it, that's a simple ask. They shouldn't be allowed to just w climb over the wall and jump on a scooter like they're fucking going over the fence at a, uh, at a fucking game. That's the one. That's the, they, it's not a voluntary choice that you're in there. Mm. Who has the balls to kill La Cosa Nostra for minimum wage? The guard on duty testified that he didn't want to risk the lives of pedestrians walking outside the prison by shooting him down, but 
I'd argue it was probably a different life he was concerned about. Not that I can prove it, of course, but I right. wouldn't have taken that shot either. Yet, regardless of why that gun didn't fire, it didn't. And back on the run, Antonino fled across the island and into the arms of a man who'd been... You know what's crazy? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, this is a, a crazy story because what is crazy to me is that the guy felt so confident that the mob would protect him, even though he lost $65 million euro of cocaine i feel like they would be like fuck you stay in prison or it's crazy he's like yeah i'm sure that the mob's gonna kill a cop for me after i all over the news their family <laughs> the italian mafia is much like vin diesel in the movie Fast and the Furious. Previously ejected from the United States on No, my charges. boys got me. There, in his shed, he spent weeks smoking pure cocaine cigarettes and planning his elaborate escape by sea. <laughs> but before that angel of mercy could arrive by boat, eh, the police kicked down the door and rearrested him. And when they talked to the man who'd been harboring him, he said, well, I mean, obviously I just did it out of the goodness of my heart. I'm a good Christian. This isn't about money. <laughs> You can believe that if you want to, but to me, uh, I'm a bit more suspect. But again, whether or not he was telling the truth, his friend was back in prison, and he'd stay there for another 10 full years. Oh, okay, there got Which means, as of this video, he's been free for a decade. And oh. yet, despite the fact that both he and every gram of cocaine is long gone from these islands, the legacy of what he left behind has only increased over time. Because that specific cocaine might have disappeared, been snorted, sold, lost to sea, but the addictions that it caused didn't. The connections to La Cosa Nostra didn't. Really? Be it the laborer strapped to an IV on a five-day binge or the farmer who took a little bump just to get through the day, pretty much everyone that that cocaine touched here wanted more. And all of a sudden, they knew who to ask. <laughs> Today, two full decades later, the cocaine coming to the Azores is no longer an accident. This is the new port of call on the way to the mainland. Everything wow. comes through here. The first European link in the chain. Busts in the hundreds of kilos are now commonplace off these That's shores. Crazy. There's more coke coming through here in a year than there used to be in a decade. <laughs> from that one accident, from that one man, from that one <laughs> imprisonment, these islands have now seen a dramatic increase in addictions, and not just cocaine. The most commonly used hard drug here today is heroin, but it's smuggled by those- Bro literally ruined this island's life. <laughs> That's fucking miserable. That, the, the party that never ended. Holy shit. The very same people who broke that yacht. It's a pestilence all its own, but it's not unique. It's just cheaper. Although, don't try to flex your heroin problem, okay? You want to talk heroin problems, you come to the good old US of A, baby. <laughs> we, got, we got heroin problems that'll make your little baby island look like fucking preschool heroin problems. We make it. We, we got fucking... We got legal heroin. We got heroin your doctor not only will, subs will prescribe you, but he'll get paid to do it in terms of kickbacks. <laughs> we got legal, profitable heroin rings that are built into the healthcare system. Okay? You don't even got to smuggle it. Uh, they ain't never been to Ohio. That's, that's on God, dude. If you head down to the methadone clinic in Ponta Delgada and ask an older user where they got their start, there's a very good chance that they'll tell you about the coke on that wreck, <laughs> about the drug that opened their eyes to a world that they wish they didn't have to see anymore. Yeah. In those soft and sunken eyes, you can still make out the legacy of Antonino. Because in 2001, a Spanish-bound yacht crashed against the rocks of San Miguel. And in some ways, it never left. This is Rare Earth. Good video. Good video. And we learned something. That was a good, a good suggestion, whoever put that in. Um, I mean, sad video. You know what it reminds me of? It's a, it's a different, um, like this was very negative, but it was happenstance, right? Just this, the guy happened to pick this one spot and left a huge lasting legacy. There's the story of, um, I'm going to get every name wrong. I'm going to get every single name wrong. Um, let me see if I can remember. Uh, oh, 
Oh, Oda Nobunaga. Oda Nobunaga is the guy that united Japan. He had a very, very small bit of territory in Japan. Like every other warlord uh, had a much bigger territory than him. And then one day, a I think it was a Spanish frigate again crashed on his in his territory, and it dropped tons of guns, aquarbuses. <laughs> so it was like a, a, a Portuguese, a Portuguese frigate crash, and and it had a ton of guns. And so all of a sudden, his little fucking territory <laughs> suddenly has more guns than anyone else, and guns are like pretty rare or non-existent. In feudal Japan. So he uses those to suddenly become the GOAT and unite all of Japan and change all of Japanese history. It's like the most insane, uh, it's the most insane, like, bit of history luck that turned everything. Uh, so yeah, just, just crazy. I guess Spain and Portugal need to fucking hire better captains. <laughs> also, wait, where was, uh, Francisco Scatino from? The fucking, uh, Scatino. Italy. God, fucking Europeans can't drive a boat for six. For shit. I will say. And the Costa Concordia guy. Uh, anyway, all right. New video. Let's see. What else? That was a good one. That was from Rusty Spoon. Rusty Spoon, good suggestion. Um, I hate modern game user interfaces. I don't think that's... How Fortnite exploits your FOMO. I have no FOMO for Fortnite, but they have, I can see this. I can see they've done very good marketing to keep the game Fortnite relevant for as long as it has. Uh, so I'm interested. I, I kind of want to watch it. Hey, Mark here. So at the weekend, I watched Fortnite end. Here's what happened. All of the game modes were suddenly completely disabled. And then me and my family were yanked out of the lobby and into an ominous waiting room above a black void. Then, in a glitzy cutscene, we watched the entire game world blip into non-existence. This led to a slightly tedious mini-game collection about collecting zero-point blobs before mm -hmm. Brie Larson appeared and did some sci-fi magic to stitch together chunks of an entirely new world. Thanks, Brie Larson. And so, after a brief bit of server downtime, Fortnite was back with a brand new map to play in. Iconic locations like Tilted Towers, Coney Crossroads, and Rave Cave are gone, replaced Not by tilted. an autumnal forest, a medieval castle, a snowy wasteland, and more. Okay, so this isn't the first time this has happened. Fortnite has actually been destroyed and remade twice already, right. but it's the first time since I started playing the game then? earlier this year. And in the months since I've been playing it, this sort of destruction has oh emerged God. as a clear Goku. and prominent part of the game's design. As often as Epic adds new content to Fortnite, it removes other stuff. Oh, it's right Vegeta. now I'm enjoying <laughs> darting about on dirt bikes, but in the past the game has had tanks, flying saucers, Vegeta, helicopters, and the gravity-defying car <laughs> from Rocket League. That's all gone now. The map, the, the one that just got destroyed, also morphed and changed over the time I played it. It was slowly overtaken by big blobs of melted chrome, permanently changing Coney Crossroads into Chrome Crossroads. <laughs> there have also been themed weeks like Star Wars Week, yeah, Bonanza cool. Week, and Fire Week, where new content like weapons and roaming characters appear There's and then Goku. disappear seven days later. That is good there have friend also been Vegeta. all sorts of limited time events like movie tie-ins, digital concerts, and even entire modes. In fact, so much stuff in the Fortnite wiki is talked about in the past tense that it reads more like an archaeological history of the game than a helpful guide. And for me, this constant change has made Fortnite one of the most enjoyable and exciting multiplayer games I've played in years. Hmm. The core of the game has pretty much remained the same. Yeah, it's all the same though, right? hundred people drop onto an island, they scavenge weapons and items, they get pushed into the center of an ever-closing... I mean, the problem is that the core gameplay loop just isn't that fun to me. Like, I... I... I, I think it's cool they keep adding new stuff and maybe it's fun to like I thought the one I remember the only one I jumped on for was when you could play as Thanos and you know um, jump around and be super godly when you picked up the fucking glove that was kind of sick Circular yeah. Storm and they duke it out to be the last man or last team standing like it, love it. Yeah, that's the only thing. significant I'm, I'm change like... since 2017 has been the welcome removal of the awkward building mechanic but everything else keeps shifting and ch Is building still gone? 
Is building like never never come back? They, they took it away and it's gone? Dude, that's so funny. It's so funny because there are some people that put a thousand, two thousand hours into grinding, practicing building, and now it's like <laughs> it's its own mode. Yeah, but what's the queue time on build? It's gotta be just a few fucking sweats left, right? It's can't because everybody that I know that still plays talks about no build. Changing. There are new weapons, new costumes, new areas, new boss fights, new game mechanics. This new update, chapter four, okay. is so right. big that it feels like an entirely new game. That's thanks to a randomized perk system, a ridiculous pogo stick hammer, mm -hmm. a new capture the flag mechanic, and the introduction of Unreal Engine 5 tech like Lumen Lighting. That's to be honest, sick. Fortnite has probably changed more right, in this sick. one update than Overwatch did in its numbered sequel. <laughs> Every week, the game feels fresh enough to keep it interesting. Right, that's actually such a roast. Dude, that's actually such a roast and true. Fucking, that is actually, I, I can't believe I never thought of that. Wait, that is such a hilarious comparison. Unironically true that Epic does more in every patch that they have like every few months than the entire game Overwatch 2. That's fucking funny. And you never know what Fortnite will be like from month to month, whereas other, older multiplayer games have soon grown stale and boring. And by removing content over time, Epic has stopped Fortnite from becoming overwhelming to new players. Imagine if this current map contained four or five years worth of ideas. Dude, that is interesting too, because I never thought about the idea of what if, what if League of Legends took out champions? Maybe not from ARAM, maybe not from normals. But what if when you played ranked, there was only it was like it was like standard in Magic or whatever, you could only use the last few sets. I think it'd be better. I think new people would be more likely to try it because there's there's less to learn, and then uh, the meta would change more dramatically, and you wouldn't have to make everything either too samey or things too weak because you can't there's just no way to when you get to a certain number of champions you can't balance them all not even close um that's interesting yeah you could you could yeah you could even reduce bands i don't know I, I, I think that's interesting i think that's an interesting thought of taking things away so that you can make things change gradually and mechanics. It would be impossible for someone to jump in now. But if Phase is not in the game, I will never play it and I will make videos talking shit in your game. So if you do implement this Riot, just remember that there's one champion that's exempt. That's Fizz. He's permanent. He never leaves. Uh, he can't be banned either. <laughs> everything else, I get it. I think it's good. I think it's smart. I just think I don't want to learn anything new and I don't want to change. I just want everyone else to have to learn and change so they can try new things and people get into the game. But instead, the game has managed to maintain a very approachable, casual, arcade feel since its inception. Plus, having content be limited makes it feel more special and memorable than something that's hung around forever. I've never put a game event in my calendar before, but I didn't want to miss out on the one and done. That's cringe. I also want to say, sorry to pause. I have to, is, I have to do this. <laughs> I have to do this. This is an important public service announcement that I have heard of the nerdiest possible thing of all time. And it's not putting a Fortnite event in your calendar. I had lunch with Jarvis Johnson today. And Jarvis Johnson and I were talking about childhoods and things we were into and games we used to like. And Jarvis Johnson told me that when he was in middle school, he would get on the phone and play Magic the Gathering by phone with his friend. And he would cheat. <laughs> He would call his friend, tell them what they're doing on each turn, and then if his friend had a better card than him, he would pretend that he top-decked the right counter. That is the cringy. I was blown away. I, I've literally never heard of something more nerdy and terrible in my entire life. Imagine, dude. You, you seem to always have the counter spell. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I got lucky. I drew it. It's crazy. Uh, uh, listen, if you're at lunch and someone admits something like that, I would normally laugh it off. But I was actually blown away. Mind blown, dude. I can't... Wait, you did something worse? Yeti, what is worse than that? I'm calling Yeti right now. He's going to tell me what he did that was worse. Yeti, you're going to tell me what you did? 
That was worse. What could possibly? That, that is literally the worst thing I've ever heard. Okay. So What'd you do that was worse? You need to understand that as a child, I didn't have constant access to video games or computers or anything like that. Okay. I'm, 20, I'm 26, almost 27. Okay. So, you okay. know, I'm like a 96, 95 kid. Yeah. But uh, so I didn't even have access to my Game Boy. We would get, me and my brother would get grounded when we were kids. Okay. So to circumvent this, we went through a Yu-Gi-Oh era. I created a card game using note cards. Okay. And I made like custom decks and I would hype them up to them and I would like make all these cool custom things for them. Wait, you made your cool, own cool. custom game, like your own yeah. card game. Yeah, custom game. But it was basically just Yu-Gi-Oh with a bunch of other references. Like I okay. had Pokemon on cards <laughs> yeah, and shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here's the important thing. Okay. Not only did I cheat in the games, I also made my cards significantly stronger and we would play <laughs> in the back of our room by ourselves for like hours on end. <laughs> It was just the worst thing possible. <laughs> and it, years later, I look back at it and I cannot believe that I did that. <laughs> That's so good. Damn. I made my bro. cards so much better than yeah, his. Bro, and you he keep pulling all the legendaries hours, from these packs dude. that you created. <laughs> Somehow your, your cards are just the rarest ones. Holy shit. That's some Kaiba shit. Uh, wow. That's incredibly cringe. <laughs> 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 Thank you for admitting that. Uh, I, I appreciate, I feel sorry for your brother. That's terrible. <laughs> I apologize to him so many times. But I, I appreciate think I traumatized you traumatized <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jenny. Appreciate that. <laughs> Holy shit. That's fucking funny. You guys are wild, dude. I bet his brother had a good time though. I think, well, maybe his brother liked hanging out with his brother, you know, cause you, little brother wants to hang out with older brother, but <laughs> that's, I would not have a good time. I wouldn't have a good time if I'm like, wow, you made the game. You made the rules. My card has, you know, four attack for three mana. Yours has 240 and 19 bonus effects. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Why does that? Um, Hans Neiman did that recently? Yeah. <laughs> a bad draw, easy clap. Uh, that's funny. I faked having super rare Pokemon cards to my friends as a kid. How do you fake that? I'm sorry, but how do how do you how do you fake having? Do you just tell them that you did? Because that's <laughs> then you just lie, or you printed it? Because if you printed it, that's really embarrassing. Because everyone knows. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even a child is not stupid enough to not know uh, that it's fake print and laminate them even still bro mm. bro i used to write down entire pokemon teams in their ev spread during church <laughs> that's just what god would have wanted <laughs> that's just like fucking job 314 <laughs> and verily did the pikachu have hasty nature <laughs> and 31 evs in speed so it could outspeed the garchomp uh <clears throat> I stole my plastic. Dude. I still remember. Um, there was these fucking three kids when I was like fucking nine and they were like 12 or 13. They were like older and they were cooler and they were in my neighborhood. And I was like, oh, those kids are cool. And they would come over to trade Pokemon cards with me. And then while one of them was talking to me, one of the other two would steal some of my rares out of my fucking binder. It was the saddest thing. It made me so sad. They fucking scammed me as a little fucking ring. And I lost so many fucking shiny gen one or um what, what first edition first edition fucking cards. That was so cringe, dude. Um uh finesse. <laughs> Don't be shy. Dox them. <laughs> you guys can go, they're like fucking. They're probably 35 now. <laughs> Bro, dude, I don't want my fucking Zoomer audience to show up at a 35-year-old man, probably with kids' his house. Oh, maybe you guys should show up and steal his kids' fucking Fortnite cards or whatever. <laughs> they're fucking amiibos. That's what you should do. We'll get them back. Mm. Someone asked, are they alive? Okay, shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> yes. 
they're alive. Don't steal his kids. All right, let's go back. You guys are, you guys, let's, we'll get off topic. We'll get off topic. Those are probably worth millions now. Well, to be honest, they're not worth millions, but guaranteed, assuming they were like perfect condition, I mean, they probably stole hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> if it's, if it's in today's currency, they stole many, many, many rare holographic first edition. That's crazy. When you think about it like that at the time, it was just like, whatever, it's a card, but mm. Um, if they were good condition, I, which no shot. Uh, all right. Chapter finale. But I can't ignore the fact that making content time limited and impermanent, well, Epic isn't just doing that to make the game more fun. This can also be a powerful retention technique designed to keep you hooked. Marketers have long known that advertising something as limited in time or stock can encourage people to buy stuff simply because if they don't get it right now, they may. Watch the three lines video. If you want to learn more about the very basics of this concept and how marketers think about it, the three lines video, I know it didn't have a great title or thumbnail. I know it's not very well seen, but I actually think it's one of the better videos. If you're interested in marketing as a fucking, uh, career job practice, whatever, uh, I would honestly recommend it. Check it out. I think it's worth watching. Gives you a good mental framework. May never get it from the McRib and Setuan sauce at McDonald's to Nintendo pulling Mario 3D All-Stars from the eShop, we can be tricked into putting more value into something simply because the seller has decided to limit its availability. Oh, excuse me. Yes? I'm trying to find a Jello Man doll. Me too, me too. Do you have any more in the back? <laughs> it's playing on FOMO or... <laughs> None of you Zoomers have seen this movie. It's called Jingle All The Way. It's from like 1995. And it's Schwarzenegger trying to get out of being just an action hero. Uh, maybe you haven't seen it. And it's just about him trying to get this Turbo Man doll the whole movie. And he's in a fight with Sinbad. Uh, trying to find the Turbo Man doll. Me too, me too. This guy. And at one point, Sinbad, <laughs> who is a mailman, maybe an out of work mailman, takes a gun and holds up a radio station. <laughs> Like, like a hostage situation to try and win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then he's got a bomb. Uh, it's, it's, it's wild. It's a wild fucking movie. Maybe we'll watch it one night. It's actually pretty funny and pretty crazy and very 90s. Um, it's not even the most whack part. Uh, oh, there's plenty of whack part. The part where he, he fights a little person uh, <laughs> for like... 40 minutes <laughs> it feels like a very extended there's a lot there's a lot to it uh do you have any more in the back <laughs> it's playing on fomo or fear of missing out that's a psychological anxiety that can arise in many ways from the social angst of seeing people living better lives on facebook to a desire to purchase something before it disappears nobody sees a better and life this on facebook. fear <laughs> is sorry if you go on instagram I'm sure you'll see somebody with a better life if you go on Facebook, you ne I'm never jealous of anything I've ever seen on Facebook. Facebook depresses me for entirely opposite reasons. Uh, All over live service games, daily rewards, weekly quests, seasons, sure. chapters, <laughs> battle passes that expire after a month, time limited events, double XP weekends, and streaks you have to maintain at the peril of going back to zero. <laughs> and it is definitely a huge part of Fortnite's design. Take the item shop. It could hold every single costume and emote that you can buy, but instead it just lists a handful of items and will refresh with new stock tomorrow. By limiting availability, Epic yeah, is hoping check that every day. if you see a skin you like, you'll be pressured into buying it now because who knows when it will appear again. The battle pass is also built around this idea. Instead of buying a bunch of skins, emotes, gliders, and sprays that you can immediately start using, you instead buy the opportunity to unlock them over time. And so you have to keep playing and keep investing your time if you want to get all the stuff you paid for. And this is all very smart. It does aware me that, you know, <laughs> it's, just, it's just frustrating that this is kind of the gold standard now. And we are in an era where every single thing is designed to hack our brains uh, <laughs> tendencies or to extract the most possible money out of us at every stage of every game. Um, I do think battle passes are better than straight up, you know, uh, loot boxing everything. I, I agree with that. 
Uh, but it's still still kind of whack. Um, mm, I'm waiting for the Peter Griffin Fortnite skin. Hey, aren't we all, brother? And you better hurry up, because if you don't complete the battle pass, all that content is gone. Forever. And as of this new update, the weekly quests must now be finished within that week, so if you want to keep up, you can't take time off. Now, for some players, this weaponized FOMO can lead to a pretty crummy experience. There are dozens of Reddit posts from players who feel trapped by these content treadmills in various live service games. <laughs> this user on the Destiny 2 sub says, I feel like I'm playing to minimize missing a reward rather than playing to maximize my progression. Other players talk about feeling locked into a single game because time spent on other titles will put you behind on a battle pass or seasonal <laughs> challenge. FOMO is also potentially a factor. Bro. <laughs> it's like, what you don't realize, what you really have to drill into your brain is that nobody fucking cares. Like, I, your skin doesn't matter to anyone else but you for 99.9999% of the time. So if you don't actually care, there, it's just... It's just that part of your brain likes collecting. Okay? Um, I think most people realize that as well. I think most people do. Yes, I understand that. But I'm just I'm speaking to the people that 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 don't. Um, and also, you know, there's a good way to think about things is like the 10 hours, 10 weeks, 10 years. Like, am I still gonna care about this in 10 hours? Probably. In 10 weeks, less likely. And then 10 years, definitely not. So it's a good way to just zoom things out. But you're definitely not gonna. You know, none of this is gonna matter to you in just a few years. Like you're just gonna, it's gonna be a different game. Um, uh, Blackboard Randy, a little different because I make content out of it. <laughs> it's a little different, right? And it's also a challenge, not just something where you're collecting, <laughs> or it's not, it's not just filling hours to fucking get a skin. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm just saying. The blackboard didn't lose me money, all right? It didn't lose me money, so it's not the same thing. In gaming addiction. <laughs> okay, fine, fine, fine. Then I'm also part of the problem getting blackboard or chips. I still believe that it's not good. It's not a good... It lost you time and time is money. Yeah, but I was paid for my time. Mm. Uh, or gaming disorder. I did lose my studies sanity. are naturally pretty limited right now. But we very much know that every psychological trick in the book is more effective on children and young adults, a group that Fortnite obviously tries to court. For me personally, FOMO in Fortnite doesn't really bother me. I'm just not interested in collecting all the skins and emotes or completing all the quests and challenges. Part yeah. of this comes from getting into the game so late. I've already missed so much stuff that it doesn't really matter if I miss more. I'm right. also certain that I'll move on from Fortnite at some point, so who cares how much digital junk yeah, I've accrued. That's what I'm saying. And I also just play Fortnite for the fun of the game, not to chase unlocks, quests, and levels. And like I said before, it's here, in the game itself, that the constant content turnover actually works best, as the endlessly changing world has made Fortnite more fun and exciting. It's also worth noting that there are far- I don't think you mentioned enough that like, it's not just that they get new stuff a lot. I think it's that Fortnite and Epic Games in general have a world-class biz dev partnerships team. Like the one of the best in all of gaming ever. And they're able to convince big brands that are notoriously very stingy about letting someone use their IP to use it. If you can get Star Wars to let you jump in and play as Darth Vader and slap you with a lightsaber, like that's usually very, 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 very difficult. And if you can get big artists to come in and like make your, your the first digital experience, like all that stuff is like incredibly hard and most brands won't touch it and most companies could never even ask. Uh, and Epic can and has and has done well. So it's easier the next time to ask again for different people. So like they've kind of snowballed that into their, I think it's their, their biggest advantage with Fortnite is they get so many brand partnerships that nobody else could get. Yeah, Star Wars, Marvel, DBZ. Yeah, it, it's a Travis Scott concert where you don't get crowd crushed. Are far worse methods to monetize a game, like being able to buy stuff that makes you more powerful or effective against other players. Literally everything you can buy or unlock in Fortnite is purely cosmetic. So got Nintendo? And the oh. most disgusting one of all, randomized loot boxes. Yeah. 
Fortnite did have them in the past, but removed them, likely because more and more countries are investigating the practice or outright declaring it illegal. But I do see how other players might find the psychological tug of FOMO too powerful to ignore. So it's been interesting to see other companies try to reduce its harmful effects. For example, Halo Infinite's Battle Pass doesn't expire, so you can keep working towards its unlocks for as long as it takes. And Bungie has literally called out FOMO by name in Destiny 2 and made some strides towards easing its negative effects, like reducing penalties on XP and Bright Dust for missing a given week of the game. Fortnite will be the one to watch though. As the leader in this space, it's clear that other developers are copying, well, pretty much everything it does. Yeah. There are, thankfully, things you can do as a player to fight back against FOMO. For example, intentionally letting yourself miss out on something can make you realize that going without Doesn't didn't matter. actually feel as bad yeah. as you feared it might, <laughs> and that can break the, the spell of FOMO end. in the future. But the most important thing to do is to simply be aware of these tactics. If you know that these tricks exist, understand how shady companies can exploit them and acknowledge their existence in the games you play. You can stop them from subconsciously sucking you into doing stuff. <laughs> Wait, is this the dude that just fucking beefed it today? <laughs> Wait, it all comes back to Harry Kane. Oh, you don't want to... I got huge FOMO on this one, dude. I can't wait to have the iconic Harry Kane fucking blunder. <laughs> That's so funny. Dude, yeah, you should pick Harry Kane, get this skin, and then intentionally miss every shot. <laughs> Why? <laughs> fear of missing out. Yeah, just fear of missing, bro. That's funny. <clears throat> you don't want to do. So be mindful and really ask yourself, are you playing this game because it's fun or because you feel pressured to keep up with its rewards or because you don't want to miss out on time-limited content or because your pals will make fun of you if you don't have the latest skin? This is actually, I mean, all this is really not, I know some people have fun, I don't think it's a big problem in a game like Fortnite. Um, and also, <laughs> if you have friends that make fun of you for not getting the latest skin consistently, <laughs> That's, I don't, I've never heard of that, but that's fucking crazy. You might, yeah, if your friends are saying, whoa, you don't have Mecha Morty, <laughs> you can't hang out with us. That's, that's, that's wild. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, but what was I going to say? Um, no, that's fine. Yeah. If so, play something else. And oh, some the games that are worse at this, way worse at this than, than like Fortnite, are really MMOs. Um, and that's why I'm I'm very I'm excited, but I'm very nervous at the amount of people who are gonna have their life ruined by the League MMO. <laughs> it's like it's gonna happen. Riot is gonna come out with an MMO that's going to ruin lives. It's going to literally, um, literally people are going to fall off the grid. Some new friends. What do you reckon? It, it's going to destroy people. And it's going to be tough to, to balance. <laughs> it's going to put people on the street, dude. Dude, there's good. I can literally tell you as a fact, there is like a, <laughs> maybe a million plus people, 100,000 people are going to drop out of classes they would have graduated, of, school, of, of, of colleges they would have graduated because of the, the MMO. It's going to cause a certain number of people to not graduate when that game comes out, much like WoW did in the past. Um, so it's, it's, you know, you can't stop it, but it is like they're creating a nuclear bomb. Like they are creating something that to some people will be so harmful. Um... Uh, when is release date? They haven't announced. It's still a ways out. You're, you guys are good. You guys are good. I'm going to go back to school just to drop out. <laughs> it made me, that's good content, dude. Let me sign back up at ASU just to spend my entire new degree playing fucking Riot MMO. Just to fucking full circle it. Does Fortnite exploit the fear of missing out to make money? Or is it an exciting part of live service games? Or a little bit of both? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, hey. it's not just FOMO too. Like when MMOs have the, the, the triple crack because what, what our brains really love is progression. 
We love putting in effort and always seeing a reward. If you get that feedback loop where I put in three hours and I get three hours worth of reward, <laughs> that feels fucking great. And real life doesn't have that at all. If you work three hours uh, hard at your fucking day job, three extra hours or whatever, there's a chance you see no reward or it's lumpy. You know, you work out, you work hard a long, long, long time. And then maybe there's a big jump in pay or whatever, but you don't get, you don't get instant. No, it's not called life. Life doesn't do that. Life is very lumpy in terms of rewards. It's very, it's, first of all, it's random. There's a lot of randomness. And then in real life, like it's, it's, there's many chances you could work and not get immediate reward or delayed or not at all. And so our brains don't like it that much. And we love putting in, you know, eight hours of progression and getting eight hours of pro progressive reward. And so MMOs are very good at drip feeding you constant. And, and the thing about MMOs is the worst. It's way worse than like a ladder is that if I put in eight hours of work in to uh, league ranked or whatever, you can flatline, you know, if I'm not actually getting better, I can just flatline. I'm not going to get actual reward. But if you put in eight hours of time into an MMO, you always get stronger. Even if you're dog shit at the game, even if you're, you have no idea what you're doing, time always gives you better outcomes in an MMO. And that's why, um, that's why they're so dangerous because it can hit, it can hit anybody, anybody who doesn't have any skill or any read, they just put time in and then they always get better outcomes. Which is why time is very addicting, very crack in the uh, uh, MMOs. Mm. Mm. And being stronger than those people with a drug. Yeah, and also you'll feel stronger. And so if the best way to get better than someone else in a popular game is time, then you kind of just put in infinite time and you're always seeing rewards because you're always seeing yourself get stronger relative to your peers in the game, which feels good to our brain. That guy is weaker than me. I have cooler gear. I have a higher level. I'm cool. I feel great. I feel strong. I'm, I'm doing something with my time. <laughs> Your brain's like dumping the chemicals. It's like, yes, this is all good. This is all good, bro. Everything is going great. You are crushing it right now. All of your time is killing it. You are, you're, you're rising up the fucking social ladder. You're really, you know, your brain fucking loves it. And MMOs are crack on that. Um, uh, so yeah, that's just how, that's how I work. That's, that's, that's why that's, I think right MMO is going to be a tough problem. Because it's going to be so popular that everyone, it's going to have a social aspect. It's going to have, uh, I mean, I assume, assume they don't just trunch the game and it's terrible, but if they do a good job. It's going to be a real issue. Anyway, that was a good video. Two for two on good videos today. That was from Spesri. Spesri. Thanks for that. I like that a lot. That was good. Game Maker's Toolkit. Um, let's see what else we got. How a random flower became the Bitcoin. I don't know if we've already watched this. It is a hilarious story. Tulip mania is one of the funniest things in history. Um, it's the first real speculative bubble in, in the likes of NFTs or, uh, you know, whatever. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very funny. Uh, but I think we've seen it. I think we've already watched this or we've seen something similar to it. Probably not this video, but similar. Um, flower hands <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, if you don't know, the basic summary is that tulip bulbs, uh, uh, started to be valuable and they'd go up in price. And then people were expecting to go up in price so they kept buying more tulip bulbs to resell them later on. And then no one had any concept of a bubble back then so they didn't understand that could ever end. <laughs> and so everyone just kept buying tulips. And eventually they were buying tulip futures, which is a contract to deliver tulips a year from now. And uh, <laughs> they were all paying like, I think equivalent of like a farm, two cows, a goat, uh, you know, a bundle of grain for the equivalent of one tulip bulb. <laughs> like a ton of real economy value was being delivered for fucking flowers that I'd know. And, uh, and so it's great. It's just crazy. And then eventually it popped and a lot of people lost a lot of money. Um, what did you pay? <laughs> yeah, I invested pretty heavily in lips back then. The old tulip game. I lost a lot of money. Uh, but gained a lot of, you know, uh, community. All right. My tulip discord, we were friends, even though I rug pulled them on <laughs> the latest fucking variant. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, the biggest corruption scandal in Latin America's history. That's a high bar. <laughs> that's, that's like fucking the tallest NBA player, bro. That's a, that's tough to beat. Uh, I, I, I got, it's nine minutes. I got to watch. I got to know what the hell, dude, let me, let, uh, 
where's the I want to I want to show you what I'm talking about. Um This guy. Um This guy, dude. This guy. He was apparently like just an uncorruptible judge. And he died in a very, very convenient car crash. And I, I wish I could find without him there would be no operation car wash. He was like spearheading it. He was going, he was actually literally uncovering the corruption. And uh but I there was actually an article that found like the leaked documents, the leaked uh discussions. Mm. And they reassigned it. Yeah, I mean, I literally think it's it's uh, this is this was crazy. This was like, mm, even well, let me see what was this, uh, dude. I, I wish I wish I could find. Dude, yeah. <laughs> And the official investigation here on Wikipedia says it was like it was he died because of bad visual climate conditions and cultural practices of the pilots. Bro, it's fucked. It's fucked. This guy was 100% murdered. And I'm not a conspiracy guy. This guy was 100% murdered. 100%. I, 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 I literally am not. I literally I have like probably z fucking zero other of these. But th this is 100%. Like. It, way, 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 way too convenient. Way too convenient, the timing. Uh, and then we're having all these rich kind of people were getting fucking arrested at the same time by him. It just, nah, it was just, it was too fucked up. Um, uh, yeah. I don't know, I'm not going to go super, what are we going to do? What are we going to do in this fucking stream, dude? But I just want to say that I, I, it's a huge bummer that this guy died because um, I remember, I remember reading a lot about this story back in the day, back, like, you know, Four or five years ago. Um, uh, uh, how does this affect LeBron's legacy? I don't know. Mm. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What else do we have? Um... Anyway, good video. Good video. Interesting. Uh, thanks to Chris Del G for, for submitting that. Interesting. Um, the four things it takes to be an expert could be good. Mm, I became a DJ to prove that it's easy by Cody Co. <laughs> Damn, it's 20 minutes, but that's a fun fucking title and thumbnail. May I watch the beginning? Paris Hilton, Shaq, Brody Jenner. What are these? And we could use a refresher. We could use a well, nice for one. one. They're celebrities. <laughs> they had illustrious careers doing something, and now they're kind of household names. Paris Hilton, reality TV star. Shaq, basketball icon. Brody <laughs> Jenner. I don't know what he did before, but he did something. The main thing that all three of these people have in common is that they're all professional DJs. That's right, disc jockeys, <laughs> all three of them. They all decided it doesn't matter what I did before, professionally, now I'm a DJ. I'm a DJ now, and then they just are a DJ. <laughs> oh, I have a DJ career, I want that, I want a DJ career, and then someone is like, okay, here it is. And they're just getting booked, and the rest of us are showing up in the crowd, watching these people, like how, how is this happening? How is Paris Hill? I mean, I know she's got, she's got, she's got some bangers. Stars Are Blind is, is a banger, but I mean, name another one. Exactly. And somehow she's playing the biggest festival in the world, Tomorrowland. Somehow Brody Jenner has a residency in Vegas, and I still don't know what he did before. How does this happen? <laughs> How much skill does it take? How much practice do you need? These are all questions I'm sure you've asked yourself many times. Well, today yeah. we're going to find out. Today to we're going to go on a journey this. together. And we're going to find out definitively whether or not it is easy to be a DJ. Good intro. God so damn. first I sat back and I thought, what is this going to take? What's the first step? Well, in order to be a professional DJ, 
you need a gig. So I called up one of my favorite clubs here in Venice and I said, hey, I want a DJ. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think like the way to do it is just to kind of jump in the deep end and just like book a show and then I could just basically do an hour long like house set. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you probably know I used to DJ a little bit in college. Oh. Just here and there, I used to do it. I know a little bit about what it takes, but the game has completely changed. That was 12 years ago. Since then, the gear has evolved. The music has evolved. The drugs have evolved. The <laughs> DJ landscape has entirely changed. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. I just gotta, yeah. Okay. That's right. They just said, okay. I guess it was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be <laughs> to book a gig as a DJ. Turns out if you have a little bit of a name and they think you can, you know, bring people into the bar, then it's not that hard. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take the time. Awesome. Thank take you so the much. Take the time, really Cody. It. Of course. All right. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Wait, what? Oh my! What are you? What is the H coin on? Hey, spoil birthday for the prime. Go over thing for the uh, eight months. What are you guys talking about? Um, Connell Jonald, thank you uh, for the eleven months. Jack Song, thank you for the twelve months. Woke Gunter, thank you for the two months. Babu Freak, thank you for the tier one. Sierra, thank you for the prime. Groovy, thank you for the thirteen months. Uh oh, everyone's just fucking minus one hundred. <laughs> yeah bro I'm, I'm not reading it dude I'm not reading it uh, That's good It'll also increase the value of Atricoin um, What Did, Was this always a possibility You could always spin Atricoin for highlighted messages People just never do it <laughs> When do we add this option Dude, oh my god, the Tulip Mania bubble's popping. Atrium <laughs> coin plummeting in value. All the investments are worthless. All right, don't worry. I'll fix this right now. Uh Uh-huh. Edit. All right, it costs Fifty thousand now. <laughs> yeah, let's see you can afford a fucking message now, bitch. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, Resmi with the fucking flex. Oh, Flugen Pop with the flex, dude. Wait, you guys have entirely too much Adrian coin. Okay, let's <laughs> get. Okay. All right, who's got a million? Who wants to be the million? <laughs> Who wants to be the fucking one million bomb, bro? Huh? Who's dropping the milli? Who's got the... <laughs> oh, shit, dude. Pepe La by Evil Genesis. Hyatt Kyatt dropping a milli bomb. Fucking IBJ. Easy Flex. Front Cakes. Holy fuck, dude. Several people dropped a million. <laughs> Famous Rue. Thank you for the one million Atra coin. Wow, we really sucked it out of the economy today. You guys feel pretty broke, huh? Who's feeling broken, chat? There's literal millionaires coming out. Uh, all right. We've finally reappropriated a lot of the doubter money that has built up over the years. Um. Wow, it's a one million dollar. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it like that. I'm gonna keep it like that, and then I will try to read every single highlighted message. Cap, <laughs> fucking cap, probably never read it again. <laughs> uh, and you can save up for a million dollars, and you or a million nature coin. What's the difference? Dollars nature coin one to one. And uh, feel free to drop it. And um, yeah, it's a guaranteed message read. Cap. Let's do a gamble. All right. Uh, is there a mod in chat? Can you put a heads or tails? 
Heads or tails bet? I'm going to flip a coin right now. Let's see if somebody can make some real money. Oh, wait. The prediction is who's more bo broke. <laughs> wait, what does that mean? Oh, it's... <laughs> wait, yeah. Uh, wait, yeah, cancel. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, let me see a heads or tails if we can. A quick heads or tails would be good. Let's get a real flip. Heads or tails, baby. Get your predictions in. Mmm. Mmm. Damn, millions of points on chat. Millions of points. Eight, not 10 million to 9.4. 10 million plus to 10 million plus. Oh, 11 million to 11 million. 12, oh my God, there's gonna be a fucking massive change in fortunes today. Somebody's gonna be able to really play some highlighted messages. Let's go, baby. Uh... Coin flip. Tails! Tails never fails! Heads voters literally broke. Literally catastrophically down. Market crash. Occupy chat street. And fucking Tails voters, millionaires. Tails voters are fucking the guys on that cocaine island. <laughs> Tails voters living large and in charge Ferraris. Fucking <laughs> uh, highlighted chat messages, most importantly. First time chatter said, Tails is in, baby. Charlie, of course, you can't have any fucking points. <laughs> Bro, you've been following since four minutes ago, and you have one chat message. You did not win big today. <laughs> Don't talk like you're on fucking Team Tails making big bets. You just showed up. You, you're, no, you're not staking anything. There's no risk. <laughs> uh, wait, what is this? Wait, we're running it again? No, it's paid out. Okay. 36.4 million. Wow. 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 You know what's funny? It's Tails was actually the 49% dog. More of you voted heads. Wow. That's a big win. That's a big win. Biggest bet was 250,000 Adrian Coin. Um, all right. Wow. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Did I miss it? Did someone, did someone highlight a message <laughs> that I fucking missed instantly? Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> definitely, definitely missed it. Uh, run it again. I will do one more. We'll do one more. Can we do one more bet? Just to see if someone can double up. To see if someone can really make the real fucking money. One more. Heads or tails. Get your bets in. And then we're going to watch Cody Kell because I did want to finish the video. It was actually pretty good thus far. Um, what else can I do? There's a review request queue. What is that? People are sending Atricoin requests. Oh, I, I, if I had them as a reward, which I don't. <laughs> what if I add a reward right now? Um, what else can I do to make a reward? Edit a default reward. Add a community challenge? What is... What? Is, wait, wait, what? Um, visit the collection. Oh. Let me see. Wait, I'm looking at this. Choose which hero I play with? <laughs> as long as you pick Fizz. Uh, lose the glasses. I play without glasses for five minutes. <laughs> Let's add that one. <laughs> As someone who doesn't wear glasses, it'll be easy for me to fulfill. Okay? If you'd like me to lose the glasses, you can now put 5,000 coins towards it. And I will I will guaranteed not play with glasses for five minutes. 
That's a fact. Um, I've never looked at this. I've actually never looked at this menu at all. Okay, what if I add a community challenge? Uh, what is something everybody wants me to do? Well, I'm not going to pair Mario because I have a date for that. How about... Um, How about, let's flip the coin, let's flip the coin. Let's see, let's, see, let's, let's see who's rich before we start talking about what we're going to do with the money. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the coin is flipping. Here we go, the flip of the century. The last chance for real money to be made. We will not do another flip of this. We're gonna watch Cody Ko. I'm gonna eat my gummy worms. Here we go, baby. Oh, baby. There's a lot of money on the line here. A triple tails would be legendary. Have the odds changed? Have the odds changed? The odds are 50-50. Okay, wow. Flip it! Oh! Oh! oh, oh, oh massive, massive, massive upset. Oh, so many people bet the farm on a triple tails, dude. Wow! The heads guys are back in. They can leave with their head held high. Literally. Literally. They were due. Wow, it was literally the um <laughs> fucking heads heads voters. <laughs> they literally kept mine and they made it to the diamonds. Holy shit. Congratulations. And there is at least one person out there that voted heads, heads, tails. <laughs> Just thinking about the guy that voted heads both times and their, their faith shattered. And they're like, tails must be due. Tails is dominating. And they switch over to tails and they just got fucking owned, dude. That's and a lot of people apparently did that. Uh, anyway, we're not, we're not, we're going to watch a little more games. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll keep that in mind, but we're not going to just flip coins for the next fucking three hours. <laughs> All right. I want to see how Cody Kobe became a DJ and I want to eat my delicious. Thank God. So we're going to lock in. Right. This is for real. I'm actually going to DJ. <laughs> so I had four weeks to figure out how the fuck I was going to make this happen. I didn't have okay. anything. I didn't have a set. I didn't even know what kind of music. Actually, I think we watch community soon. Am I crazy? Is anyone, is anyone actually, you know what? Uh, I don't want to watch Community unless I get a Community Challenge. Watch Community. <laughs> uh, I will watch an episode of Community. And it needs to be like 20 million. No. It needs to be like 50 million. 50 million. Wait, it's already raised. <laughs> It's already raised 16.5 million. <laughs> All right. Number of days? Oh, uh, yeah, fucking one, dude. One day. All right. If we hit 50 million, then I will. Oh, it start. Start it. Start challenge. I don't know where you guys put the money in then. If we hit 50 million, I will watch community. Otherwise, I'm not having them. Mm. 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 All right. Um, now where was I? How did I find it again? Dashboard. I think I was gonna play. I have no idea. I have nothing. I don't even have a gear. Oh, good. 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 2,500 bucks. I mean, it's a fuck ton of money. But it's max 2K each? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, then it's literally impossible. <laughs> It's actually literally impossible. <laughs> Wait, 
Why is it max 2k each? That's ridiculous. Yeah, you actually can't. Dude, I gotta have a better chance of just making it a one coster. All right, I will. We'll delete it, and I will do a fucking $5 million just for the rich purple to fuck. It's going to be like Jeff Bezos giving to the fucking homeless, dude. Uh, add new custom reward. Watch community. I'll watch it. And that's for $5 million. Who's the rich? Who's the fucking community frog that wants to watch community? It's added. It's a rug pull. <laughs> I did. I rug pulled. I rug pulled 2K out of everyone's wallet. <laughs> Bro, you how how many sorry, I'm I'm not doing quick math off my head, but uh 50 million at 2K a pop is 25,000 people. We have generously 5.5K in here. Generously. Okay? It's not... We would need to really <laughs> grow the stream. <laughs> Nobody has 5 mil? Nobody does have 5 mil. All right? So we're not watching community. Mm. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. mm mm all right. Um, DJ. It's an investment. <laughs> this is an investment in my future career. So then I thought, what am I going to do for a week while we wait to this gear to ship? And I was like, wait a minute. DJs usually have their own music to play, don't they? Maybe not Brody Jenner. <laughs> I don't know why I'm beefing with Brody Jenner, but he seems like a nice guy. Maybe not him, but like other mainstream DJs have their own music that they play. I don't have any house songs besides Knock It Off Space Rangers Remix. I need a house song. So I hit Christian up. I said, you want to make a song? He said, let's do it. So I'm Please heading to Christian's place off. right now. I've had this idea for a while of a song, an EDM-ish type song. You know, something that you could play in a club or whatever, or like a festival, but it's all about Moderation. So like just doing a little bit of drugs. Just drinking a little bit. <laughs> just getting buzzed. But not all the way there. Because anything's okay in moderation if you're trying to stay healthy. I think that would be funny. That would be very funny. Because every other EDM song is like, we want to stay young forever. We want to whatever. It's like, well, you're not going to. So <laughs> just face yourself. I have a little idea for a chorus. It'd be like, Drink a little bit, smoke a little bit, but not too much, cause bro, I'm staying healthy. Uh, and then whatever the drop is. That's kind of my idea right now. Just to play that in front of a crowd of people would be so funny. People would be like, yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> Set the drink down. All right, maybe I'll get a water next time. <laughs> Just anywhere, yeah. Okay. Pop a little bit, drink a little bit. Not too much, cause I gotta stay hill. Not too much, cause I gotta stay healthy. Not too much, cause I gotta stay healthy. It actually works. Yeah. It kind of even. Not this is. Can you do ad libs? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> this is a slapper. <laughs> we made an absolute slapper. I'm gonna bounce it. I don't think it needs anything. Else. Yeah, this song is perfect. It's the perfect song. <laughs> All right, a week later, I had my song and the gear finally arrived. So we took it up to the studio to unpack it. And I very quickly realized that it was a little bit too intimidating. Bro, you guys are faking it. No, I didn't miss it. You guys are faking it. Nobody did it. <laughs> I can tell. It tells me if somebody redeems it. It's not just the chat message. It also has to show up in this thing. You guys are faking it. I literally didn't miss it. <laughs> yeah, nice try. Uh, it has to be in this fucking menu. <clears throat> also, even though I don't have my glasses on, because I've lost them, uh, there is no 5 million. 
And I was, even though I was going to watch Community, I wouldn't do it until after this episode. I want to watch this fucking thing. I want to see. This is fun. This is funny. Mm. Oh. Ah. This is crazy. This is this is my future in a box. <laughs> All right, I got to be honest. First impression, this looks very intimidating. There is a plethora of buttons on this thing. Wait, who am I? Brody Jenner? A DJ. <laughs> yeah, so all we gotta do is plug it in, and I think it's just, you just plug the aux cord in, and then just press play, right? I don't Easy. know what all these other buttons are for. I don't think you really need them. I don't even, I do, I don't know, I have no idea where to start. There's no There's shot. so many buttons on this. That celebrity DJs are using all these, right? It, it literally has to be press play and dance. I know I'm not, I'm not trying to like, I know everyone says that about DJs, and it, it's not entirely true, but it has to be. It has to be true for them, right? It has to be. There just has to be. They don't. There's no way they learned this thing. Mm. Yes. Why are there so many buttons? Okay, my next goal is to make this play some sort of noise. I'm just gonna try the USB sticks. I just gotta find some. This is proof that DJing is not as easy as you think. It's harder than it looks to find USB sticks. <laughs> Come on, think. I found something. One of my producers left this here. Now we need to connect this to speakers. Well, perfect. Training tutorial and video manual. Two hours and 14 minutes. Perfect. <laughs> Let's watch that oh, in the video. Plugged in anymore. <laughs> oh, we could we could just plug it into the booth. God damn it! I'm just I'm just like pressing buttons, just hoping that something happens. <laughs> okay, so so far this is not easy at all. The whole joke here is that I have a fart sound that I'm trying to play is the first thing that comes out of these things. But I, I can't make a fart sound play. <laughs> <laughs> we did it! We fucking did it! That's a, that's a podcast right there. <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. Alan? I don't know about that. And that's my set, ladies and gentlemen, good night. It soon became clear that I was gonna need professional help. So I hit up my friend and world famous DJ, Dylan Francis, to come over and teach me, show me his ways, prepare me for my own show. Cody, how much do you think you know about DJing? Not that much. Good, forget all of it, <laughs> okay? Okay. Because right, I'm about to show you everything you need. <laughs> okay, so the, the gig is booked, you gotta teach me that's easy. How, to, how to, you know, not make a fool of myself. Dude, that's easy. I got you. You just need to know how to count bars. Yeah, okay. And okay. you already make music, so. That's true. That's... And that's just one, two, three. Three yeah. is next, four, and then four <laughs> comes next after that, of course. <laughs> yeah, if you can count to eight, you're good. <laughs> okay, good. Good, I can definitely do that. <clears throat> what other songs do we have besides these three? <laughs> those, are, those are the three. I don't have music, I don't have a set list. Okay. I just downloaded these from YouTube. You did? Yeah. Okay, YouTube's MB3, baby. I'm scared, dude. Scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. No, 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 we gotta have it. Okay, here. You also gotta know, like, you gotta listen to all the music that you're gonna be playing, and right. you gotta know where you would want to cue these songs in. Do that. Oh. If it's to the right, then you just do that. Oh, I get it. Okay. So he knows shit. Only if it's on vinyl mode. Yeah. Okay. Low, mid, high. You know what that is. Yep. So I always turn the lows off because if you're if you're doing any effects, you have the lows on, it just gets so muddy. Yeah. So you can just have it on highs. Got it. Give me some notes for what you say into the mic. The kind of things that you should say to the crowd. I'm the worst person to ask for that. Okay. <laughs> I'm the worst person to ask for that! Yeah, like that? that? Okay. So, my set time is from 11 to 12, but uh -huh. there is a DJ from 10 to 11. So if I was transitioning... This video is hype because it teaches people that the buttons actually do shit. Yeah, I'm actually learning. I, I Listen, I don't know what a professional DJ does versus a celebrity DJ, but... I assume there is some skill to it with this fucking complex machine. From the last guy. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're about to play that out. So if you're transitioning from the last guy, you're gonna have to come up and you're gonna have to put in your SD card while I'm playing. Oh god, okay. So let's just pretend. Yeah. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. I'm playing, dude. Hold on, my last song. 
Well, I have to mix the song. Yeah, no, hold up. Okay. All right, cool. No, I'm ready now. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go in. Is that gonna happen? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Put it in. All right. Okay, got it. All right, we're good. All right, cool. Mix in. Okay, fuck off. All right, all right. Well, I need my SD card. SD okay, card. hold on. Just hold right. on then. All right, the last thing is the graduation. Mm -hmm. You did it. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right, I'll see you later. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if I'm going to play a show... I need people to show up, which means I have to promote it, which means I need some sort of flyer. The, the venue, Winston House, they emailed us. They said, we need a logo and a, and a photo for the flyer. And I said, I don't have either of those. And so we took some photos and we made the flyer ourselves. I'm going to buy this flyer. It's the most <laughs> oh, generic marketing. DJ flyer of all time. <laughs> <laughs> you bought it. I look like a magician. <laughs> okay, I think she's done. I'm just going <laughs> to... Send it to my phone and see how it looks on the story. I mean, <laughs> you would be insane not to come. To yeah, this. you'd have to go. So now that I had the you gear, the coaching, that. the flyer, the gig, all that was left was for me to build a set, practice, and then just be very nervous. I'm going for a walk, just listening to music, <laughs> just going through as many songs as I can, trying to find the best ones. I already like put together somewhat of a set last night. For like three hours, I sat there, listened to music, and put together what I thought was cool. But I was really trying. Nervous. I'm fucking shitting my pants. <laughs> Honestly. Like one of the things that Dylan said was like, oh, you just have to have a good taste in music. And I'm going through these songs, I'm like, do I? Like, is this song only good to me? <laughs> and then I practiced for like, I, I would say in total, like five to seven hours, I would say, in total. <laughs> <laughs> what is strange is like even if the dj is talented at mixing the songs and doing everything none of it really has to be live right like if they found a great way to mix two songs um and add sound effects they could just do it all at home record that <laughs> And then play that at the end. There's no reason to do it live. And then you just have to, uh, yeah. That was kind of sick. I'm fired up. And then I was at the point where I was like, okay, this will probably sound okay to drunk people. So all that was left was the show. You gotta have lights. You gotta have fucking ambiance. So let me Uber to the venue. I'm freaking the fuck out. I feel like I. This like feels a lot bigger than it actually is. For some <laughs> yeah. I'm shocked that he's nervous because he makes videos for millions of people and has done like VidCon and everything. And this is like a small club of people that are already Cody Co fans showing up to hear him fucking DJ as like a goof. Like it's there's no losing. There's no shot they're gonna be like booing. I don't think I would be nervous. If I if I hosted Atrioc fucking club set and then people actually came to that for me, they're not expecting a fucking great show. <sighs> Although they would boo anyway, <laughs> even if it was good. I mean, like 30 people over at the place and are all like, whoa, first set, man. It's like maybe I should have done something a little smaller to start, but. And then we arrive there and it's fucking packed. Giant line too. It'll be good because my set's only going to remix uh, iconic marketing jingles. <laughs> Every drop is going to be like, I'm loving it. And then uh, <laughs> there'll be no, yeah, and balloon songs. It's going to be balloon songs mixed with fucking Sleep Country Canada <laughs> mixed with fucking We Are Farmers. Bump it up, bump, bump, bump. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I already sounds fucking hard as shit. Wait, that actually sounds pretty good, dude. <laughs> and then my set time comes. We gotta do this. Okay. Oh, sorry. Lord, please bless this set. Yes. And forgive us our trespasses. Yes, we forgive those who trespass against us. And let Cody have one of the greatest nights of his entire life. Ever. Amen. 
Christ. Bro, nobody's dancing. It's literally a bunch of Cody Co fans here for pictures in the tiny house club. There's no shot that, I mean, <laughs> not a single person is dancing. <laughs> that actually is worse because it feels more like no one's having a, like everyone's there watching you very intensely. We're normally a DJ just playing music for people to dance to. Listen, listen. 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 Listen, listen.
it just reaffirmed that it wasn't totally a stupid idea to like yeah, try cool. new things because sometimes it ends up in cool situations like this. And then once he came on, I want to say finally. I think the lesson is try new things as long as you're an extremely famous YouTuber with celebrity friends <laughs> who will definitely show up to make your experience worthwhile no matter what. That's, I think, is the lesson. If you have a lot of disposable time and income and famous connections, then you really, you should be trying more new things. All right, get out of your comfort zone. And I know that applies to all of you, so I need you to do that. Uh... I finally was able to like relax and just like have fun. And at that moment, I learned the most important part of DJing, taking people's B-reels in the front row. That seems to be the thing that everyone <laughs> cares about the most. All in all, it was an awesome fucking time, honestly. I learned a ton about DJing and what it takes. Just wanna say a big thanks to everyone involved in making this happen. Dylan, Christian, Matt, James, everyone at Winston House, um, all my friends that came and watched. Thank you for supporting my new career path as a 32-year-old new, newly professional DJ. And now, finally, to answer the question once and for all, is DJing easy? Sort of, that's right, that's the answer. As far as artistry goes, I mean, is there something else you can practice for like seven hours and then perform professionally? Probably not. I don't think anyone's gonna see a clarinet show after seven <laughs> hours of practice. Um, so yeah, do. in that sense, I guess it's pretty easy. But once you get the basics down, it can be as hard as you want it to be. Watching Dylan and Christian mix, like it becomes so clear how much experience they have. They're so much faster, they know what to do and they're way more creative. So if you want to make it hard, that limit yeah, is Yeah, I guess you could be more creative. You know? Then again, there are some more. DJs where they just press play. There are some mixes where everything is pre-mixed and they just go up there and press play. That happens. There are videos of people just straight up pretending to twist the knobs and shit like that. <laughs> so that could be it with some of these people. Doesn't really seem like Shaq does anything up there but dance, which I think is fine, honestly. DJ so Diesel, he's, baby, you know, more, don't he's more knock of a it. entertainer than like a world-class disc jockey. So yeah, I would say- Bro, if you're gonna fake it, I would just unplug the thing, right? And then they can fucking twist all the knobs they want. <laughs> it feels so whack to just fake touch it. <laughs> hey, picking great music, building a set, maintaining energy, and mixing well is what it takes to be a good DJ. So is it easy? Sort of. By the way, the song Moderation is out on Spotify. It came out today. Uh, link is in the description. Stream the absolute living Christ out of it. Uh, and hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed it because it took me a long time to pull this off and a lot of nerves. And I will finish the video with a promise. When you come see me on the Vegas Strip, Did when I have a residency, I will be mixing <laughs> live and honing my skills and not just pressing play. <laughs> so I'll see you there. Hi, it's Outro Cody. Here to let you know that uh, there's a bunch of merch available. All right, that's Kevin. That's, uh, that, this video is old, so. Um, yeah, it seems pretty easy, to be honest. All in, seems pretty easy. I think overall, I think pretty easy, but but uh, like exponential at the top end. Like the last the last 10%, you can get insanely good. Um, uh, when are you doing it? Mm, TwitchCon next year. I'm going to be uh, front, front front what do you call it headlining i'm headlining i'm headlining twitchcon all right it's gonna be a three-day set there's not gonna be anything else to do with twitchcon other than watch me and i'm gonna play just a fucking 72 hour show and i'm not gonna stop i'm gonna be up there fucking just losing it um clip and ship ship it to twitch that's <laughs> what so they booked me uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is 9.50. None of you have any money. So, I am going to offer a small, small, small discount. Uh, I'm going to make a community challenge. Well, no, I just, God, the community challenge doesn't work either. What I'm going to do is I'm going to watch community. <laughs> I'm going to watch a show called community is what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to fuck it. I'm, and the, I remembered why I didn't do channel points. Cause I don't give a shit. <laughs> it takes so long to set up and there's no point. And I don't like thinking about it. So rather than live my life dictated by channel points, 
I'm going to stop caring about them. And I'm going to do what I want to do, which is watch Community right now. Uh, probably two eps, and then I'm going to rip and dip to this party. Um, so if, and yeah, this is for free. You guys are getting 5 million Atricoin worth of value for free right now. That's, that's fucking crazy. What streamer would give you that deal? I'm the only one, dude. Um, let's find the episode. Go get snackies right now. Right now, get snackies. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. I get the episode set up. Oh! Wait! Today's gonna be a great set of two episodes. We're gonna watch episode 22, Applied Anthropology, which is uh, a funny episode. I don't know if I remember that well. But then, episode 23 is a fistful of paintballs. And episode 24 is for a few paintballs more. So actually, we're watching three episodes today. We are going to watch three episodes. <clears throat> and then I will go to the party. These are 20 minutes each, so it should be around 60. Perfectly ending at 11. But we have to start, and we're going to go from one right into the next. There's not going to be a big break here. Okay? I need to get it done by 11. I have to leave here around 11. So. Uh, let me get a water. Let me get a water and then we're jumping right in. Fucking bang, bang, bang. 